Hey, welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. Good to see you. In today's episode, episode three of Building a Forkhead, I'm going to show you how to do your layout points for your clamp screws. Now, I've got the die come, or rather the layout die, off of these, okay, from our first process. We'll be doing that a lot through these videos. Layout die is not meant to spray on once and that's it. Now, you spray it on for an operation, you use it, and then it gets all scratched up and you really can't tell what's going on. You wipe it all off, spray it down again, remark it for the next top. Okay, so got that out of the way. Right now they're back in the white. Now, uh, what I want to talk to you about are these screws right here. All right, so you get a good picture. Here's a close up of it anyway. Now, I got these at Lowe's. You can get them cheaper if you go to your screw warehouse if you have one in your town. I do have one in my town. It's just that didn't get them from there. I got them from Lowe's because I happen to be there. Anyway, no big deal. But first, give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell too while you're at it so you know when my next videos are coming up. Now let's get on with this. In last week's episode, episode two, we went ahead and bored out the holes for these, the forks themselves, and also uh, this, the steering stem. Now, before you go any further, have your blocks laid out in front of you in the way they're going to be on your bike. In other words, uh, top plate, bottom plate, in the orientation that you're going to have them. Top of the top plate, top of the bottom plate, you know, get what I'm talking about. Take these, lay them down on your table, stack them just like this, line them up best you can. Take your forks, insert them into the holes, and hopefully, they'll both go in. If they do not go in, do not proceed any further. You screwed up somewhere and you have to go back and fix it. In other words, these holes do not line up with the holes in the other plate. That's not good, okay? So there's no sense in wasting time doing anything else until you get that resolved, whether it be taking a little bit more out, which I'll get to that in just a minute, or just remaking a plate entirely. So you got somewhere off on your dimensions, basically. Before I go any further, uh, showing you about the screws and how to locate them for the clamps and all that, I wanna to stress to you about the dimensions on your fork tube holes. You don't want these to be press fit in, obviously. You want them to have a tight, snug fit. I usually allow myself a couple of thousandths, one thousandths, just enough to get these guys to slide in easily by themselves with their own weight going back and forth. No big deal. What you do not want is a bunch of slop. If you get 10 thousandths to the big side, that is it. it uh, I, I really would not say anything over that. I don't wanna say unsafe, I just would not like those dimensions. Uh, so you, you wanna keep it within 10 thousandths plus of this diameter, preferably. Now, this is just from my experience. That's all I'm going off of. I don't know what rule of thumb is or anything like that by the manufacturers, but you know, get them as tight as you possibly can, okay? Really pay close attention to your dimensions when you're boring these things. All right, guys, I've got this dyed again. Uh, remember, I cleaned everything off, got all the old dye off because it was all scratched up and nasty, Redyed it. And I came back with my calipers and scribed my marks in here for my tab where my screw is going to be, my clamp screw, for the top of the steering head. Now, this is the bottom side of the top steering head. Now, what I'm doing right now is outlining the profile of the tab that's going to be coming off the back side of the steering head plate. I take this screw, this is an inch and a half screw. I always use stainless steel 5 16 Typically these screws come in 304 or 316 stainless. It's a 5 16 by 18 inch and a half long. Basically what I do is I take that dimension, cut it in half, and I go equal amounts on both sides of the stem hole. And instead of having a nut on the end of it, like the factory one did, 
That's just ugly. It will be threaded on one side and have a clearance drill cut on the other side. Kind of get a visual reference. Of course, the head will be sunk into this area right here. Gives you an idea of what it looks like if I can get it balanced. All right, now, like I said, I want to mark this on both sides. Come back, draw the profile out. Again, using my calipers as a scribe. They say you're not supposed to use these as scribes, but everybody does it, so you know that's just the way it is. Hopefully you can see all the scribe marks that I have on here. And basically it's just a profile of what the finished piece is going to look like. Let me see if I can give you a close-up of this. There you go. Something else, I never write any numbers on here on my work piece. The reason being is that it, if I do, they will get knocked off, scratched off, and I'll lose my reference. So take a notepad, always have a notepad with you in the machine shop, write your numbers down, and that's where your numbers stay. Like I said, the reason why I have all this drawn out is simply profile lines. In other words, where I'm going to come in with my mills, my cutting tools, and hog material off. I have about probably five eighths of an inch of excess material up here. This is the front of the steering head. I wanna come in, I wanna hog all that off and come down here. This is the tab where my screws are gonna be for my stem. Hog all of this out to this line right here and right here. Just take all that down. Now I'll leave like 50 thousandths, you know, both off, off of both lines and be able to come in with an end mill and you know clean all this up when I do the actual profiling. The reason why I'm taking so much off on each side of this steering tab here is so I can come in and do my drill process and my tapping process. You do not want to have to drill through this much material in order to get a finished hole down here. The reason why is there is a chance that your drill will walk. And I really don't have that much to play with down here, and I'm not gonna risk that, because if it walks, then this part is trashed, it's ruined, and I'll have to start all over again. Uh, this is the end mill I'll be using to do all the profile cutting with. Now, I'm not gonna use this to hog all this excess material off. I'll use a shell cutter for that. This is simply gonna be used for the profile cutting. This is an inch and an eighth diameter by two inches. You know, the whole thing's like four and a half inches long. Now, my material is two inches thick. This, these, both these plates are two inches. I, I wanted a thick plate on the top and bottom to give it a different look for the bike. Okay, that's purely cosmetic. It is gonna add a little bit of rigidity extra to it, but it's mostly cosmetic. So that's why I went with the thick plate. This cutter is listed on here as being two inches long. This is not two inches. This is two inches, 50 thousandths. The cutting area is actually longer than what it comes as being described. So I can get away with doing a profile cut all around this with this end mill. When I'm hogging large amounts of metal off with a shell cutter, I'll go in with a Sharpie and mark my parameters of where I want to stay out of because this shell cutter will take a lot off very quickly and ruin a part. So be aware of that if you're using one. Okay, now here comes one of the tricky parts. And the reason why it's tricky is because the distance that my knee will travel down is not necessarily enough in most instances. Uh, I just barely have enough room to run a drill in here. Now I can lower the table a little bit more. My knee will go down further, but not far enough to where I can use a chuck. Also to get down onto this ledge and where the tab, the ear is going to be for the stem, I have to use a long drill. Now I'll probably end up cutting this drill off to make it the proper length and lowering my table down further or doing something like that. This is really, not the most difficult part of this process, it's just the most pain in the ass part, I guess, you know. The rotary table and the profiling, that can be challenging. What I'm doing is basically getting my main tap pole drilled. As long as you get your main hole through here, your main tap pole, you can come back with your clearance drill and also your countersink for the head of the screw so you can countersink that down into your material. Then I'll just flip it over and do the other side after I get finished doing this side. Uh, after I get my pilot holes run, my tap holes, then I'll continue on to this piece down here and get that taken care of. All the products that I use in this video will be in links down in the description area. If you want some or you want to check it out, just go on down there and hit that link. I appreciate you guys showing up every Sunday and watching me. 
Thanks for tuning in to Cycle Fab. I'll catch y'all next Sunday. Bye.